Robin is a superhero, and under no circumstances when I call someone a Robin do I mean that in a negative way. This was Mike and Mike back in the day when we dressed up. I mean, I was Robin, right? You look just like him. Yeah. I mean, come on, D-Wood. I mean, that's a pretty good Robin, wouldn't you say? Not bad. Your, your hair is a lot better now. Now? Yeah, it's a lot yeah. better now. Yeah. You're like, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. How, how yeah. old were you, Greeny? I don't know. This is probably 15 years ago. So, I mean, I was, you know, in my early 20s. Yeah, you're. <laughs> I, I'm not. If I'm a supervillain, none of this is scaring me. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. I'm threatening care. One way or another. I, when I say people are Robins, I mean that as an enormous compliment. And with that thought in mind, here is my green list for today. The top five Robins in this year's NBA playoffs. At number five, I'm going to go Carl Anthony Towns of Minnesota. Carl uh, Anthony Towns has allowed this to become Anthony Edwards' team, but Carl Anthony Towns is still a significant player. In their sweep of the Suns, he averaged 19 and 10. He shot 53% from the floor. He remains an incredibly important piece of that and could be the one that brings them past Denver. If anyone's going to be Denver, I think they could. I'll put Kyrie Irving next. He's averaging 26 points a game. And his shooting splits are 50, 43, 91 against the Clippers. We also know he has the history in the postseason of making big plays. He hit the shot that won the championship LeBron brought to Cleveland. And number three, I put Jalen Brown because I didn't know exactly where else to put him. As an individual player, he probably historically is the best player on this entire list. But we haven't seen the huge moments in the postseasons from him. He averaged 23 and 7, shooting 52% from the floor against the Heat, but that's not really the test that's going to matter. I put Tyrese Maxey at two. Now, again, you want to argue Maxey has become this team's Batman. We can have that conversation. But his performance in this series at minimum, he's averaging 32, 7, and 5 against the Knicks. He had the 46 points, including the miracle finish at the end of game five. But I didn't feel like I could put him number one because Jamal Murray has proven himself alongside Jokic to be the truth in big moments. He had two game winners, practically both buzzer beaters against the Lakers. He was critically clutch in their run to a championship last year. Jamal Murray, I think, has deserved right now to be considered the best number two on any of these playoff teams until someone else steps up and makes those kind of plays in championship moments. So there they are. That's my list there of the top Robins in the NBA playoffs. And again, I say it as a compliment. Cat, Kyrie, Jalen Brown, Tyrese Maxey, and at number one, I put Jamal Murray. Tim Legler, what's your reaction? I like the list overall. I think a couple of things I definitely agree with. Jamal Murray, number one, he absolutely has ascended to that position. And I want to say it's not always easy living in the shadow of another player and being able to thrive and be consistent and, and being productive and being there every night. So give Jamal Murray credit for that. The next three guys I agree with this, I agree with as well, Greeny. I think it's debatable where you'd put those guys. Two, three, four. I think you can shuffle them around and make great arguments for the order that they go in. I've got one more guy, though, that I think I would put on there fifth instead of Carl Anthony Towns and it's Jalen Williams from Oklahoma City and maybe people aren't familiar enough with him and clearly there's not a long playoff track record for Jalen Williams but his emergence as a legitimate primary offensive option for Oklahoma City is a huge reason why they ended up the number one seed, why they just swept New Orleans. He averaged 22 points a game on 56% shooting over the last three games in that series and the deeper they go and the more games they play, the more people are going to become familiar with how good this guy is. By the way, he's also a lockdown defender, so I'd like to have Jalen Williams get some love on that list. All right, for the record, both Drea and Zach were nodding vigorously along, so let's, let's say for the record you both agree. Let me bring up one I think is also an interesting question here, yeah. and we touched on this yesterday. Mm -hmm. At this point in Philadelphia, yep. has Tyrese Maxey become Batman and Joel Embiid become Robin. Yes, in this playoff series, at this point, with the way Joel Embiid is hobbled, the way he's struggling to take care of the ball, the way his efficiency has struggled in this series, it's Tyrese Maxey as Batman, and it's Joel Embiid doing everything he can, giving everything he can, but he is Robin. In this series, their percentages, there's a 10% difference in their percentages. Tyrese Maxey's 50% from the field. Joel Embiid's 43% from the field. Tyrese Maxey's right at 40% from three. Joel Embiid's right at 30% from three. Like, efficiency-wise, Tyrese Maxey, production-wise, taking care of the ball and making the big plays in the big moments, Tyrese Maxey's Batman. I get it. But have we actually, at the same time, witnessed sort of a superhero baton pass, which is to say, going forward, 
Is this Maxie's team now instead of Joel's team? I think it's too soon to say that. This guy won the MVP last year. Yeah. He was averaging 35 points a game, better than a point a minute before he got hurt. He just had knee surgery. His Bell's palsy. I think it's and, and by the way, for the Sixers to actually get out of this series and make noise, I think Joel Embiid's gonna have to become Batman again. The Maxi becoming Batman is a cool story. I think for the Sixers to do something. Joel Embiid, if he can summon it, if his body will allow him to, has to get back to Batman. This is just a thought that I actually literally just had standing right here. If Tyreek Maxey is Batman throughout the season, does Joel Embiid last longer in the playoffs? Mm. Like, what have we seen from Joel Embiid every playoffs? He's injured. So if there's less pressure on him throughout the season, if he defers to Tyrese Maxey throughout the season, do we get the best Joel Embiid in the playoffs. It's just something to think about. Legs, you know that team so well and, and all the rest of that. How how does can this become Tyrese Maxey's team uh, going forward with, with, with his emergence, I think, as a legit NBA superstar? Yeah, listen, I think he can emerge as a legit NBA superstar. And I can tell you this right now, the people in Philadelphia have far more confidence in what they're about to see out of Tyrese Maxey in game six, game seven, however many games the Sixers play in the postseason than they do Joel Embiid right now because of his limitations and because of his history actually in some big spots in the postseason. But having said all of that, I kind of agree with Zach from this standpoint. As long as Joel Embiid is on that roster and Joel Embiid you know, is healthy during the regular season, it's going to still look like Joel Embiid's team. Uh, Tyrese Maxey is just figuring out a way to max out who he is alongside of him. But there's no question what he has done and the, and the way he plays under pressure, Tyrese Maxey is the perfect co-star for Embiid to try to elevate this franchise.